Mr. Speaker, there's one last chance. There was a bill that I asked to be introduced by unanimous consent. It is House Bill 1391. Let me tell you what it does. It provides for what's termed bundling, that is combining rate petitions into one. Is this going to solve the problem? No, it will not. It is yet another step in the process to address the problem. Mr. Speaker, you referred that bill to the House Commerce and Labor Committee several weeks ago. As every day went by, though, I never got a patron notice. I never got an invitation to come down and present the bill. There was never a vote. It lays there still. Mr. Jefferson was a smart guy on a lot of levels, and one of the things that he did by building into the rules is that this body always has the ability to overrule a committee. That the will of this body, these 100 men and women that sit in here, can overshadow that of a committee. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to do more than we have done. We have to help these people. Neil? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman Eels. I would say to the gentleman that I'm out of words as to what to tell the people in Southwest Virginia as to why they're not getting any relief. Can the gentleman then tell me what I'm supposed to tell them as they wait for another 18 months for any solution to this problem? Mr. Speaker, I would tell the gentleman that notwithstanding the fact that, that I did not, and, and, I, and I'm saying I, this is what the gentleman from Henry would need to say, I, the gentleman from Henry, did not work with the other legislators from Southwest Virginia. I, the gentleman from Henry, did not work with the Democrats from Southwest Virginia. I, the gentleman from Henry, did not work with the Republicans from Southwest Virginia. I decided to go my own route, but notwithstanding that, I would say, Mr. Speaker, that there was a bill introduced by Mr. Carrico that all the rest of us uh, thought was a good idea, and it rolled back your rates right now, immediate relief. Not some pig in the poke in July 1st, but a relief March 1. That's what I would tell them if I were you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Will the gentleman from Henry uh, rise for a question? Will the gentleman from Henry yield? I yield. Gentleman yields. Uh, the uh, legislation that you uh, requested or had in the uh, Commerce and Labor Committee, uh, I believe we had a short hearing on it, didn't we? No, sir, we did not. And I would say by way of further explanation that I originally introduced this same bill. I can't recall what the number was, but I introduced this same bill. It was inadvertently rolled into the gentleman from Grayson's bill and was never considered. And I asked for unanimous consent on the floor of the House, explained what had happened, and wanted to reintroduce the bill. And that was probably three weeks ago. I introduced the bill. The Speaker referred it to the House Committee on Commerce and Labor, and that's where it has set. I have received no patron notice. I've never been asked to appear before the committee to explain the bill, to describe why I think it would be effective in curtailing Appalachian Powers rates. In other words, there has been no hearing on this bill. Another question, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman yield. I yield. The gentleman yield. Uh, you had a town hall meeting in the town of Abingdon, and I attended, did I not? Yes, you did. And we had, what, maybe 125, 150 people there. Uh, that would be a very good estimate. Another question, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman Eel. I yield. And, uh, Gentleman Eels. You explained to the people there what had happened uh, here in Richmond and that your uh, legislation didn't get a fair hearing. Uh, that was on a different bill, and I, I felt like that, uh, uh, that while that bill did get a hearing, but it was not heard, and that I moved to discharge the committee on that bill. Another yes. question, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? I yield. The gentleman yield. And you also announced to the people that I was the only one that voted with you in the Commerce and Labor Committee. I certainly did. 
<clears throat> and you had the list of those that uh, vote against. Uh, another question, Mr. Speaker? Gentleman yield. Pardon me, sir. Gentleman yield. Uh, you, you also had the list with you of those that had voted on your motion on the floor. I did. <clears throat> another question, Mr. Speaker? Gentleman yield. A and the would you agree yes. that uh, I, I spoke in favor yes. of your position? and told the people how much I supported them and would continue to support them? Yes, you did. Another question, Mr. Speaker? Gentleman yield. I yield. Gentleman yield. Uh, uh, the gentleman from Henry, I, I'm a little bit confused, uh, and I'll just ask you, suppose, just suppose that today this body voted to grant your motion. What would happen? The bill would come forward and would be on its first reading, and I would move to waive the constitutional readings and bring it on for debate and vote. Another question, Mr. Gentleman, yield. I yield. Gentleman, yield. So that would mean that there would have to be some things done in order for you to be successful in your legislation. Yes, including getting 51 votes for the bill. Ne next question. Gentleman yield. Yield. Gentleman yield. Suppose you got 51 votes, what would happen then? It would then go to the Senate for consideration. Another question? Gentleman yield. I yield. What would Gentleman happen yield. in the Senate? Well, if Sir? I don't I don't want to be smart, but if I could figure out what would happen in the Senate, I'd I would be a genius. I don't know what would happen. Another question, Mr. Will the gentleman Speaker? yield? Well, I yield. Uh, Will the gentleman I'll, yield? I'll just say yield. to the gentleman from Henry, I can't understand uh, why we want to waste our time on doing something that's not going to be beneficial and not be helpful and cannot produce results. All right.